Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS presenting to you the daily quiz for 22nd of July 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Which of the given statements best describes the Kafala system? A system for monitoring the migrant laborers followed in the Gulf Cooperation Council countries? An informal and illegal method of transferring money without any physical money actually moving? The Common Systematic Law on Administrative Procedure adopted by governments of Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, Sharia-compliant interest-free banking system. What is the context? This column in the Indian Express newspaper talks about a Supreme Court order on the problems and miseries of migrant workers. It talked about the importance of registration of migrant workers without which the workers might not be able to access any of the welfare schemes in existence. What the Supreme Court has done is it has called for immediate measures to be taken to register workers under the three labour laws that are in place and has issued a plea to intermediaries and contractors to ensure registration of workers. Our question talks about the Kafala system, which is a system followed for monitoring the migrant workers followed in Middle Eastern countries. Let us discuss more about this. The right answer to this question is option A. It is a system for monitoring the migrant laborers followed in Gulf Cooperation Council countries. So what exactly is this Kafala system? This system started in the 1950s when the Middle Eastern countries started hiring migrant foreign workers. Kafala literally translates to take care of. Under this system, the migrant worker's immigration status is legally bound to his employer known as Kafil during his contract period. So this migrant worker under the system is not allowed to enter the country or transfer his employment or leave the country without getting a written permission from the kafil. Human rights organizations have called for this system to be abolished because they say that this system makes way for forced labor as well as exploitation. So where is this system followed? The question itself says that this system is followed in the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The task for you is to find out which are the countries that follow Kafala system, that is the Gulf Cooperation Council countries, and if there are any other countries that also follow this system. Moving on to question number two. Which of the given statements with respect to nehru Liaquat Pact is or are correct? It was a bilateral agreement signed between India and Pakistan in 1950. Its aim was to resolve the issue of protection of the minorities. It did not recognize forced conversions in the respective countries. It is also known as the Lahore Declaration. What is the context? An article in the Hindu newspaper today makes a mention of the nehru Liaquat Pact that was signed in 1950 following massive communal riots following the partition. Let us discuss more about this pact as we discuss the answer. Statement number one is correct because this was signed between the then Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, and his counterpart from Pakistan on the 8th of April 1950. This period saw India and Pakistan facilitating a transfer of populations, rationalizing bilateral ties after the violence of partition. The main aim of this particular pact was to resolve the issue of protection of the minorities. It drafted a framework for treatment of minorities in both the countries. Therefore, statement number two is also correct. Statement number three is also correct because this pact did not recognize forced conversions in both the countries. The nehru Liaquat Pact is also known as the Delhi Pact and not Lahore Declaration making statement four incorrect. The Lahore Declaration was a bilateral agreement and governance treaty between India and Pakistan that was signed in the year 1999 after a summit at Lahore. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3 only. Moving on to question number 3. The unique alder-based jhum cultivation is practiced in which of these states? Option A, Meghalaya. Option B, Nagaland. Option C, Manipur or option D Arunachal Pradesh. Why this question? This article in the Hindu newspaper today has a mention of Khonoma which is famous as India's first green village. Khonoma village is in Nagaland near the India-Myanmar border and a unique sustainable alder-based jhum cultivation is followed here. 
We know that jhum cultivation or shifting cultivation is practiced in the northeastern states of India. In this unique system of jhum cultivation, alder is planted in jhum fields because alder grows quickly and also helps in land recovery. Alder also helps in fixation of nitrogen and therefore increases the yield of jhum crops. The tribes in this region that is Khonoma in Nagaland follow alder based jhum cultivation. So now we know that the answer to this question is option B Nagaland. Another important fact to note is that the Khonoma Nature Conservation and Tragopan Sanctuary won the India Biodiversity Awards 2021. Therefore it becomes important to remember the location of this sanctuary which is in Nagaland. The India Biodiversity Awards is a joint initiative of the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, National Biodiversity Authority and the United Nations Development Programme. Question number 4. Which of the given pairs is or are correctly matched? We have missile and its types. Akash, surface to surface. Parak, 8, surface to air. Astra, air to air. What is the context? DRDO has successfully tested the new generation Akash missile. It is a surface-to-air missile and can neutralize aerial threats. This is yet to be deployed in the Indian Air Force, but once it is deployed, it will boost the air defense capabilities of the Indian Air Force. It is in this context that we've taken this question. Coming back to the question. A missile is a guided airborne range weapon. So missiles come in different types and are adapted for different purposes. So there are surface to surface missiles, then there are air to surface missiles, then there are surface to air missiles, air to air missiles as well as anti-satellite weapons. As and when you come across such missiles in news, it is important to take note of such important details and revise them in future. We just discussed that Akash is a surface to air missile. Hence, we can easily eliminate option A and option C since one is wrong. Next comes Barak 8. This missile is Indo-Israeli surface-to-air missile, making two correct. The Barak 8 missile can defend against any type of airborne threat, for example aircrafts, helicopters, anti-ship missiles as well as ballistic and cruise missiles. Therefore, two is correct. Three is also correct because Astra is an air-to-air -air missile. This was developed by DRDO. Astra is the first air-to-air -air missile developed by India. It is a beyond visual range active radar homing air-to-air -air missile. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option B, 2 and 3 only. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2013. Mycorrhizal biotechnology has been used in rehabilitating degraded sites because mycorrhiza enables the plants to number 1. Resist drought and increase absorptive area, tolerate extremes of pH, resist disease infestations. Select the correct answers using the code given below. Let us first understand what mycorrhiza is. A mycorrhiza is a mutual symbiotic association between fungus and a plant. It refers to the role of the fungus in a plant's rhizosphere that is its root system. So what does mycorrhizal fungi do? The mycorrhizal fungi helps the host in a sense that the fungi absorbs all the nutrients and water from the soil and transfers them to the host. Another way in which these mycorrhizal fungi help the host is by helping the host plants to withstand root diseases. Also, this fungi produces something called as oxalic acid and this oxalic acid helps in suppression of root diseases. A few other characteristics of mycorrhizal plants is that they have high tolerance to adverse soils, high pH, high temperature, drought as well as toxic heavy metals. Therefore, statement number one is correct. It can help the plant resist drought and increase absorptive area. It can help it tolerate extremes of pH also resist disease infestation. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3. Moving on to the fact of the day, Northern Ireland Protocol. What is the context? Britain has demanded that a trading arrangement for Northern Ireland that was decided upon post-Brexit must be renegotiated. Let us understand this in detail. Northern Ireland is a part of the United Kingdom. Following Brexit, which is the exit of Britain from European Union, border with the Republic of Ireland is the only land border between UK and the European Union. 
Now that UK is not a part of the European Union, free movement of goods between this border would become complicated. For this reason, that is to simplify this, Prime Minister Boris Johnson negotiated something called as the Brexit Treaty on Northern Ireland, also called as the Northern Ireland Protocol, right? So what exactly is this Northern Ireland Protocol? This protocol aims to resolve one of the complicated issues created by Brexit. That is, what to do about this border between Northern Ireland, which is a part of the UK, and the Republic of Ireland, which still remains a part of the EU. This protocol sets out a plan to deal with this unique situation here. How? It leases Northern Ireland half inside European Union system and half inside the British system. Now, what does Britain want? Britain has said that this protocol could create so many problems that it might have to be abandoned totally or it can be renegotiated. So what does EU say here? The European Commission, which is the EU's executive body, has said we can come up with creative solutions but we cannot renegotiate this deal. Now this has given rise to fears about peace in Northern Ireland. So why does Britain not like this deal now? The Northern Ireland Protocol means more checks on goods entering the Northern Ireland from mainland Britain and this effectively creates a border between the Irish Sea. Now, some British companies have also stopped supplying to stores in Northern Ireland saying that they can't handle the extra paperwork. And this has angered many people in Northern Ireland who want this region to remain a part of UK. Number two, under this protocol, foods with animal origins coming from mainland Britain to Northern Ireland need something, that is, health certification. This means that the animal products should meet European standards to end up in Ireland. And EU wants Britain to sign up to Europe's health certification rules to minimize the needs of control. However, the British want minimal checks. So far, EU has waived off many such regulations during the grace period. However, another cause of worry for Britain is that this grace period will end soon. This is exactly why the UK wants a renegotiation in the Northern Ireland Protocol. Prime Minister Boris Johnson says that the protocol was a huge compromise by the UK and has accused EU of applying it too rigidly. Now, the UK government wants to get rid of most of these checks and reduce custom procedures so that the goods can flow more freely. Another thing that the Britain has said is that it could consider to deploy an emergency clause known as Article 16. Article 16 allows Britain to act unilaterally and allows it to suspend parts of this protocol. While Britain has said that it can consider this Article 16, it first wants renegotiation of this protocol with the EU. In case Britain chooses to take this way, that is use Article 16, it can lead to retaliation or even trade war between Britain and EU. That is all from the fact of the day. But before we end today's discussion, please note a correction in yesterday's daily quiz. While explaining question number 3, it was mentioned that Namdev belonged to 16th century. Please note that both Sant Namdev and Sant Namdev belong to the 13th century and Sant Tukaram belong to the 17th century. The answer still remains option C, both 1 and 2, because both the statements are incorrect. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.